Okay, what we are going to go over today is how to divide using two-digit divisors. It's very similar to one-digit divisors, but some of the numbers are a little bit harder that you can't do in your head, and sometimes you might have to multiply out to the side to figure out what you're dividing by. I am doing some problems out of the math journal. I'm starting on page 120, but I'm doing examples on grid paper. So if you are someone who knows that you work better on grid paper or on line paper, I would suggest you get one of those to follow along with me. Um, the first problem that I'm going to do is on page 120, and it's part A. I have written out the example on your screen. It is 756 divided by 63. As I work through this problem, I'm also going to list the steps out to the right just as a refresher on how to go through each step to solve a division problem. The first step is the actual dividing, and when I divide, I ask myself, how many times can this number go into this number? And in this case, we are looking at how many times 63 can go into 7. I know that 63 cannot go into 7, but it can go into 75. 63 goes into 75 one time, so I put the 1 above the 5. I do not put the 1 above the 7 because that would mean that 63 is going into 7, which is not correct. So be sure that when you're putting your numbers at the top that you are lining them up in the correct sp spot. The next step that I do is to multiply. I take the number at the top, the 1, and I actually multiply it out. So it's going to look like 1 times 63. When I do that, 1 times 63 is 63. Then I'm going to subtract. 75 minus 63 is 12. After I subtract, then I bring down. In this case, it's the 6. After I bring down the 6, then I have to, again, start over, and then I have to divide. This time I'm going to ask myself, how many times does 63 go into 126? Now, that might not be a fact that you know off the top of your head, but there's kind of an easy way of where to start. I know that 6 goes into 12 two times. So as a starting point, I'm going to multiply 63 times 2 to see if that gets me somewhere close to 126. When I multiply that out, I get 126, so my guess was right. So I know that 63 goes into 126 two times. Okay, I multiply that back out, and since I just did the work, then I copy the 126. I subtract again. Because I have no numbers in the dividend that don't have a digit in the quotient above it, then I know that I am done. And since I don't have anything left over, I don't have a remainder, so my answer is just 12. Now, the last step in this process is to check your answer, which you learned yesterday. The way that you check this is you take the quotient, or the answer, and multiply it by the divisor. So I'm going to take 63 times 12, and when I do that, I get 756, so I know that my answer is correct. Okay, look at the next example. We're going to follow along using the exact same steps. The first thing that I'm going to do is figure out how many times 22 goes into 4. I know that 22 cannot go into 4. So, I know that 22 can go into 46. The way that I can figure that out is I know that 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 2 is 4. So I know that it, it's going to go in there 2 times because 22 times 2 is 44. I multiply that back out and then I subtract. And then I'm going to bring down the 9. And then I'm going to ask myself, how many times does 22 go into 29? I know that 22 will only go into 29 one time. When I subtract, I get 7 left. 
I have to bring down the 2. And then I'm going to ask myself, how many times does 22 go into 72? Now, if you use the trick earlier, I know that 2 will go into 7 only 3 times because 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to start out by multiplying 22 times 3. When I do that, I get 66. Now, some of you are probably wondering how I guess correctly the first time. Well, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to go ahead and try 22 times 4 just in case. When I multiply 22 times 4, as you can see, I get 88. 88 is too high, so I have to go back down to 66. So I'm going to use 3 in the quotient. Multiply it back out. 3 times 22 is 66. And then I'm going to subtract. Now, I have no more room up here in my dividend. If I keep going up here, then it's not going to come out correctly. What I told my class is once you run out of digits in the dividend, then you can stop. Anything that you have left over is a remainder. So my remainder in this case is 6. The last step is to check. So make sure that you check that problem when you're finished. All right, I'm going to give you two practice problems. I want you to work out both of those problems. Don't forget to divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and check. When you have finished, go ahead and hit play, and I will show you the correct answer and all of the work that goes along with it. Here is the work and the answer for the first one. And here is the work for the second one. Okay, I want you to spend the rest of the time working on page 123, numbers 1 through 10 unless otherwise stated by your teacher.